Um, so it was great to talk to these guys about it. But I remember bringing up my favorite episode of Holly Rendell Unfiltered <laughs> was the first episode with your parents. Yes. Because they're just my a favorite gr- one, too. Really? It's a great yeah. interview. And your mom was discussing microdosing. Yeah, my parents did microdosing before, like, it was cool. Or anybody <laughs> before knew what it anyone was. in. Yeah. Before the Silicon Valley even existed. Yeah, before it was a thing, before it was even called microdosing. I mean, it's fascinating how you can be, it can sober you up. Mm-hmm. You know, I was having fun in New Orleans during Halloween last year mm-hmm. with uh, some pretty conservative friends who just mm-hmm. like drink wine. And mm-hmm. they were, they were kind of like, oh, you're bringing your weed pen because we're yeah. all sharing. Our-. I was like, no big deal. I'll just put it. It's not a big deal. Like, yeah. I'll put it away. It's not. But they were like, okay, so she's doing the shrooms. Uh, I'm like, it's Friday night on Halloween weekend in New Orleans. Of yeah. course I am. Yeah. So I took a little bit. I had made these chocolates for myself mm-hmm. and I took a couple. And they didn't do anything. Like an hour and 15 minutes later, I was drinking wine. And I'm like, I can't even get a buzz off of this fucking Pinot Noir. Like, yeah. what's going on? And then I was like, can we maybe maybe I'll go back to the hotel and get another one? They were kind of conservatives. They were like, mm, we don't really want you to do that. I was yeah. like, that's fine. No big deal. I'll just eat at a tiki, which is my favorite late night restaurant in New Orleans. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's this great Mediterranean restaurant in New Orleans I've that's open New- super New late. Uh, Which I really want to go. I know. Everyone tells me I would love it. The first time I went there was a week where I was kind of feeling like I might be getting sick. Mm -hmm. So I took it easy, did the daytime activities, stayed like didn't drink. So Mm -hmm. as uh, someone who doesn't drink, you're going to have just a great time there. Yeah. Seeing the sights and the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Not the, not the (laughs) Mardi Gras party. Oh God. Yes. Yes. So yeah, the mushrooms have... Between the shrooms and like the um, working on myself and the therapy, it's been a really positive turnaround for me. So you've really like taken this and turned it into like a positive learning experience. You have to. Yeah. And nothing heals emotional wounds like helping others. And so in February, I have like... um, It's so crazy because I can't tell you like how much of what you're saying is literally like exactly what they talk about in 12-step programs. Is it really? Oh, Exactly. Like, exactly. And that was one thing, like, that the 12th step of, um, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous is uh, taking, you know, your your experience, your healing, and going and helping others. Oh, it helps so much. So that, that, that's what, like, completes the triangle. You know. Uh, um, but, yeah, there's so many things that you've said. I'm just like, dude, is she? I'm like, is she in the program? I've only had. I'm like, I know you're not in the program, but you're literally talking. And the thing is about the 12 steps is it can be applied to anything. There are so many, like, amazing things about it that it doesn't have to be about drinking. Right. Or drugs or anything like that. But just about like a really great way to live your life. I mean, I've never been like a spiritual or even religious or even spiritual person. Mm -hmm. But like over the past couple months, I knew that I sort of needed to like do some reading about like how to how to deal with trauma constructively. Yeah. And so that's where it's kind of coming from because I've only had like three therapy sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you find a lot out of three therapy she sessions. Is, I'm she is available. I'm incredibly impressive. Thank you. I think I was always capable of handling trauma in this way yeah. is what it boils down yeah. to. But my therapist is also, she makes herself available on Voxer so that throughout the okay. day, if I'm like going through something, I can always hit her up and oh, she that's will. that's really great. I know. It's been wonderful. It's amazing. But so a couple years ago in 2012, my best civilian friend since I was like 18 has a daughter. She got diagnosed with a really, really rare form of cancer. Oh, God. Her 12-year-old was diagnosed with, <laughs> it's called chondrosarcoma, ex- mixoid chondrosarcoma of the soft tissue, which is basically a sp- crazy spine cancer. Yeah. And what was crazy was, so she was in the hospital, basically lived in the hospital for two years in the oh, children's God. hospital. in um, uh, God, there was only one place in southern all of southern california that had this specific proton radiation therapy treatment that she needed to do so it started out she was going you know driving almost two hours one way Mm -hmm. every week to get this proton radiation therapy Mm -hmm. and i would go meet them Mm -hmm. because no one that my family and friends like before i got in the industry no one was really financially stable so these people weren't financially stable i was the only one in their life that had the time the freedom and the money to basically go help them and spend time with them. Right. right so that right. took up my whole life. So dating was kind of out of the question from 2012 to now right. because I was sort of reeling from this, dealing with it, but also being the strong one. Because mm-hmm. my role to them was to come in and sort of 
help them kind of feel like we were just back to normal and just sitting on the couch and like like we're at home while they're yeah. in the hospital. No one else in their family could take eight hours off of work every Tuesday to go just spend time with them and make them feel normal. Right, right, right. So I saw a lot of stuff. And when she passed in 2014, we started a um, like a toy drive for the hospital because all the kids there – don't get to see their families. A lot of them are low-income families that just don't have the means to provide anything for the holidays. Right. So we would do a toy drive. And I know it's taboo to involve an adult industry person with anything to do with kids. So I was kind of cautious about it. Which... <laughs> I know it's so. I hard. mean, we're not fucking pedophiles, <laughs> right? Christ. No, definitely. But I know what you mean. Like it, it is. It's like you can't. And and on. On one hand, like, I get the idea. You don't want to mix the idea of, like, right. sex with children, obviously. But it's also, like, we're not monsters. <laughs> I mean, my friend and her husband, they've been together since they were, like, 15. And they're yeah. super they're huge hippies. Yeah. Like, all, like, straight up tells their kids what I do. And they don't, like, their, their kids aren't going to go do porn just because Aunt Meg, that's my real name, like, yeah. is doing it. Like, they're yeah. not interested. Yeah. What I do isn't cool, no right. matter what. We're old people to right. them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's weird. Yeah. So it's never been like a problem, but um, we did start that toy drive. And what I would do is just sort of tweet it out and Instagram it. And my fans, my wonderful fans, would go on Amazon and just buy a bunch of toys and have them send it to my P.O. box. Mm. 